In this lesson, we are going to discuss the evidence of plate movements. At the end of this video lesson, you should be able to explain the different pieces of evidence of plate movements. Since Pangea existed during the Permian period, one important evidence that may support the continental drift theory is the field of paleontology or study of ancient life. Paleontologists needed to look for pieces of evidence of life on the locations that are said to be connected. One of the fossil evidence is Glossopteris. Since a plant as large as Glossopteris cannot move and cannot pollinate on the long range, it is believed that the presence of this plant in South America, Africa, Madagascar, Antarctica, India, and Australia is possible because of the connections of these places. Its pollinators might have been able to traverse these locations easily. Another fossil evidence is the Mesosaurus. The Mesosaurus is a freshwater lizard which was found in South America and Africa. Because it is unlikely that the Mesosaurus could have traveled broad stretches of open salt water, their geographic distribution provided paleontological evidence supporting the hypothesis that these two continents were once joined. This map shows the Mesosaurus Sea, the freshwater habitat of the Mesosaurus. The Cynognathus is a mammal-like reptile that resembles the present-day dog, which gives its name and meaning of dog jaw. It is a fossil found in Africa and Argentina, which is a part of South America. The Lysosaurus, also known as the Chauvel reptile, is a herbivore reptile whose fossils had been found in Africa and India in the mid-1960s. By the end of 1960s, Lysosaurus fossils were also recovered from Lower Triassic rocks in Antarctica's Tres Antarctic Mountains. Combining the paleontological evidence discussed, it is found out that these fossils can connect the continents based on their distribution patterns. Their distribution patterns would result in the disconnection of the continents, thus giving us the second evidence of plate movements which is the apparent fit of the continents. The coastline of continents, even if we do not take into consideration the distribution pattern of the organisms found by paleontologists, will still fit together like puzzle pieces. It is not only in Gondwana in which the continents fit together perfectly. This is how the continents are believed to have appeared before as one big puzzle. To say that this is not a coincidence that these continents have coastlines that fit together, geologists also look into the parallel mountains of the coastlines of neighboring continents. Particularly, geologists look into the Appalachian Mountains in North America and compared it with the mountains parallel to it in Africa. Geologists found out that these rocks in the two mountains are similar in composition and layering order. The same methods were done to compare the mountains in Greenland, and geologists found out that the mountains may really be connected because of the same finding. This means that similar order, arrangement, and structure of the rock layers and mountain ranges on opposite sides support the idea that continents are connected before. This is what we call rock and mountain correlation. This is one information which we can get from rocks. Another evidence from rocks is the magnetic reversal. Remember that the Earth acts as a big magnet. This means that the minerals in the crust which are pushed out of the ridge are attracted to the magnetic pole of the Earth. Magnetic reversal shows the spreading of the seafloor and we can see the polarity of the magnetic field of the Earth in rocks. Particles in it get frozen in the direction of the magnetic field as magma cools. Scientists can see the polarity of the magnetic field at the time that the rocks were formed by looking at these particles. Another information which we can get from rocks is glacial striations. When large boulders are pulled under glaciers, glacial strips are left. They scrape the underlying surface as they pull along, forming grooves parallel to the glacier's direction of movement. This gives us the next evidence. By arranging the glacial striations, geologists were able to determine the movement of the continents as they drifted away from each other. Using the glacial striations directions, Wegener showed that the glacial striations in South America, South Africa, India and Australia actually mean that all glaciation experienced at about the same time, the striation points to continental glaciers originating in various locations in their current positions. Striations, however, point to one continent by aligning the continents. Alfred Wegener was well aware of such climatological mysteries as a meteorologist, such as the remains of temperate climatic trees that can be found under the polar ice. From this, he started to map worldwide rock and fossil data distributions that suggested tropical, desert, and polar climates. From this, he found that continents displayed signs of many climates being felt. Some of the most important climate data come from the South American, African, Indian, and Australian continents. All these continents display signs of glaciation in the past. 
to end this lesson, let us review again the following pieces of evidence of plate movements. Fossils show the connections of the continents which comprise Gondwana. The continents can fit together like puzzle pieces. Lastly, pieces of evidence from rocks include mountain correlation, magnetic reversals, glacial seriations, and paleoclimatology. And that ends our discussion on evidence of plate movements.